are amazing first responders. We love you. Hi, library friends. It's Miss Vivian from the Casa Verdugo Library. And today, story time is going to be about our first responders. And I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters, our paramedics, our nurses, our doctors, our respiratory therapists, and everyone who comes to the aid of someone who needs help. The first story I'm going to share with you is The Berenstain Bears Go to the Doctor by Stan and Jan Berenstain. Take a deep breath, stick out your tongue, come see Dr. Grizzly while you are young. The Berenstain Bears go to the doctor. Tomorrow, said Mama Bear as she helped the cubs get ready for bed, you'll be going to the doctor for a checkup. Doctor, said Brother Bear, we're not sick. And what's a checkup, asked Sister Bear, a little worried. It's just what it sounds like, said Mama. Dr. Grizzly will check to see if you are growing the way healthy cubs should. Will it hurt? Asked Sister, pulling the covers up close. Now, now, said Papa Bear as he kissed her goodnight. You just settle down. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. But Sister wasn't so sure. The next morning, after a good breakfast, the family got into their red roadster and were on their way. Do you ever get checkups, Mama? Sister asked as they drove along the dusty dirt road. Yes, I do, answered Mama. I don't need checkups anymore, bragged Papa, because I... Uh, uh, uh. What do you do when you have to sneeze, boys and girls? Uh, Choo! Be sure to cover your sneezes. I never get sick. That was quite a sneeze, said Mama. Oh, it's just dusty road, said Papa, turning onto the main highway into Bear Town. They pulled to a stop in front of the doctor's office. Come, Cubs, said Mama. We don't want to be late for our appointment. But Brother held back. He remembered something. Are we going to get shots? He asked. That's up to, 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 a choo. The doctor, said Papa, sneezing an even bigger sneeze than before. Bless you, said Mama. It's just his bright light, sniffed Papa. I never get sick. The doctor's waiting room was a busy, cheerful place with pictures on the walls, books to look at, and puzzles to do. Brother started a puzzle. Sister took a book, but didn't really look at it. Other bears were coming in, and she looked around the room at them. There were cubs of all ages with their parents. Some of the smallest cubs looked a little worried. Sister smiled at them so they wouldn't be afraid. There was a big cub with a cast on his leg. It had names and funny drawings all over it. He let brother write his name on it for luck, and sister drew a picture. There was even a little baby cub only a few weeks old. Next, called Dr. Grizzly. It was brother's and sister's turn. Dr. Grizzly was friendly, but she got right down to work. She had a lot of bears to take care of and not much time to waste. First, she weighed and measured the cubs. Fine, she said. You both gained weight nicely and grown taller. She listened to their chest with a stethoscope and poked them all over to check on everything inside. Then, Dr. Grizzly took each cub's temperature to see if it was normal. 
she checked her throats. Then she looked at their eyes, ears, and noses with a special little light. Next, she tested their hearing by whispering very softly. Then came the eye test. Brother read every letter except the very smallest. Sister didn't know all the letters yet, so she read a special chart that looked like this. Very good, said the doctor as she studied some papers in the folder. Sister whispered to brother, so far, it hasn't hurt at all. Well, that pretty much takes care of it, said Dr. Grizzly, looking through her eyeglasses at the papers. Except for one thing. I see it's time for your booster shots. I knew it, said brother. Why do we have to have shots when we're not even sick, said sister. Now, sister, said Papa. The dog, 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 ha choo! Doctor knows best. Bless you, said Dr. Grizzly. And that's a very good question, sister. As she got the shots ready, she called out into the waiting room. I've got a brave little cub in here who's going to show you all how to take a shot. Getting back to your question, sister, said Dr. Grizzly. You see, there are some kinds of medicine that you take after you get sick, and those are very useful. But this kind of shot is a special medicine that keeps you from getting sick. Will it hurt? asked sister. Not nearly as much as biting your tongue or bumping your shin, the doctor explained. There, all done. Dr. Grizzly was right, and it happened so fast that sister didn't even have time to say ouch. The little cubs who were watching were very impressed. So was brother. After brother shot, Papa said, Well, doctor, we'll be go, 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 ha choo! Going now. Just a minute, Papa Bear, said Dr. Grizzly. Let me have a look at you. But I never get sick, Papa started to say. Hmm, Tem temperature above normal. Hmm, throat red. Hmm, nose all stuffed. Time for your medicine, Papa, said the cubs, offering a big spoonful of the gooey pink stuff that Dr. Grizzly prescribed for his cold. Well, said Papa, smiling weakly, I hardly ever get sick. And that's the end of the Berenstain Bears Go to the Doctor by Stan and Jan Berenstain. And here's a song that we could sing together. We're going to use this traffic light. And will you name the colors with me? Here's red, yellow, and Green. Once again, red, yellow, and green. Twinkle, twinkle, traffic light, standing in the corner bright. Red means stop, green means go, yellow means wait, even if you're late. Twinkle, twinkle, traffic light, standing in the corner bright. So my last story for today is Awesome Ambulances, written by Tony Mitten and illustrated by Aunt Parker. If you've ever had an accident or if you're very sick, an ambulance assists you. Its response is very quick. When the station takes the call to say that you're in need, an ambulance will get to you by driving at great speed. To clear the road ahead of it, its siren fills the air. It tells the other drivers someone's hurt or needing care. For extra visibility 
especially at night, and ambulance on call will flash its very vivid lights. To operate an ambulance, there has to be a crew. They're highly trained. These paramedics know just what to do. They carry the equipment for every situation. They check to see it's all on board while waiting at the station. They store all kinds of bandages in case you start to bleed. To deal with pain and problems, the medicine you might need. There's oxygen to help you breathe. If you're really sick, and if you have a broken bone, these splints should do the trick. For people who are very weak and cannot move or stand, the paramedics use a bed on wheels to lend a hand. This bed is called a stretcher. It gives a gentle ride, and after that is folded up and packed away inside. When the patient's safely in, the ambulance at last, it's time to get them treated at the hospital and fast. The driver travels speedily, but keeps the vehicle steady. The hospital is radioed to have them at the ready. On the way, the paramedics use their skill and care to keep the patient comfortable until arriving there. Once they're at the hospital, the staff are there to meet them. They quickly take the patient off to doctors who will treat them. And that's the end of Awesome Ambulances written by Tony Mitten and illustrated by Ant Parker. Hooray for first responders. And here's a special song for them. Our amazing first responders work because they care. Day or night, their bravery is always there. When you hear the sirens, please stop and let them through. Our amazing first responders, we love you. Thank you to all of our first responders across the United States and around the world. Take care.